of this building that is now a bunch of media companies was uh, back in the 70s was the Austin Opera House, which was owned by Willie Nelson and Tim O'Connor, who has um, the backyard and was on Rosa and Austin Music Hall. And so in 84, Freddie built this studio and it was wired in with the Opera House. So a lot of the shows over there were recorded here. And then it closed in the mid 90s and this remained a studio, um, commercial recording studio. Till about probably 15 years ago, we also had Cardinal's recording studio, which was at West of Town, Willie Nelson studio that we ran. So we started booking this one to a client of ours that's a recording school. So for about 10 years, they did that, and we didn't really do full-on recording. Then about three years ago, we combined the two studios, built a Studio B, where we put the equipment from Cardinalis, combined two of our recording consoles, and reopened this studio. Um, we always had the square footage, but we didn't utilize a lot of the back space. So we built that Studio B, did our console, and um, it's the only, the only one of its kind in the world. We combined an old API and a Neve. About probably a year and a half have we been fully reopened. So we do primarily recording sessions, but we also, now that we've reopened it, kind of lends itself, this building has such a unique history, and the way that we've redone it kind of took it back to its roots. It kind of lends itself also to unique private events. So we do that a lot as well. So I'll give you the tour kind of showing you both ways. It, 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 it is, it's, it's got that same sort of it does 70s it has that feel. feel. Yes, and, it does. and we purposely, um, when, when we redid it, like we did new fabric on the walls and, you know, restained wood and stuff, but we purposely kept it with that vibe mm -hmm. because I think it's, um, everybody feels like it's just a little more creative and old school and we're very much still into analog tape machines. Mm -hmm. We obviously have digital everything, mm -hmm. but we're but we're still very, like these are both vintage analog boards. Mm -hmm. um, that This was one, and this, w this was an old API, this is a Neve. And so this center section was kind of created custom to make them talk to each other. Mm -hmm. That's never been done. You just don't see that anymore. I know, you really don't. don't. And people are like, oh, y'all are kind of crazy. You know, studios are closing left and right, large studios. And mm -hmm. we decided to make ours bigger and better and larger. <laughs> but we have been thrilled with it. I mean, it, we, I kind of see a cycle coming back. Um, there aren't those huge recording budgets like there used to be, but that's coming back somewhat. And now it's a little more like people will come in here and do basic tracks and then go to home studios and do overdubs, you know, mm -hmm. to, to kind of fit a little more into smaller budgets, then come back and mix. Mm -hmm. So it's cycling back to our kids' generation realizing that you know that's it really does that sound makes a difference i mean you can record on a pro tools rig in your garage but it is not the same so 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 we're thrilled that we've redone it reopened it and i need to knock on some wood are really doing well with it so um but anyway so this is studio a where the engineers you know push all the buttons and record and then the band the cut tracking rooms are back here so i'll show y'all back this way i'm i'm here day to day pretty much all day, every day with my amazing team. Freddie's he obviously built this place and is the studio, but he's he's the guy we go to for the big stuff. The day-to-day -day stuff is sort of not his forte, and I love it. I mean, I'm, I'm so thrilled that he built this place because it's, it's like our other child. And so um, I think by heavy lifting, he means that I, I pretty much I, I pretty much live here, you know, I, I sort of uh, live and breathe this studio and, and I'm thrilled to be able to do so. We just finished a Sean Cullen record and she, she was all set up in this room and her band was all set up in this room so we had tons of candles and stuff in here. Um, now we're back, we've been working on Gary Clark Jr.'s record for months and he kind of uses both rooms. So it just kind of switches around. But when we do events, like, and we're, we're not by any means going to be, you know, like a wedding. You know, we're not going to do just your typical normal events, but, um, but it's just such a unique event space for, for anything that's kind of arts based or, you know, has a music component. This room back here is really magical when a band plays live back here. So if we're doing an event, usually we'll use this room, set up a bar and cocktail tables in here. And like if a band is playing back there, you, you have these sight lines, so people that are really wanting to hear the music can sit back there, but people that are kind of wanting to chat and mingle can experience the whole thing, but in a different room where the band's still getting the respect mm -hmm. and 
you know, of people kind of really listening. So, um, and, it's, and it's getting to where we, like over South by Southwest, we had events almost every day. So we do, it, it's, it's a cool thing that it's not only sort of a different approach from what we've done before, but it gets bands that wouldn't otherwise know about us, you know, coming in and out and through. So, so it's, it's turning out really, we're, we're, we're excited about it. This is the piano, and this is how they, I, I was saying, how they isolate the sound. So the piano player's in here, the vocalist is in here, but they can all still sort of see each mm -hmm. other and talk to the engineer. What would be out of the stories that you recall would be one of the most unusual things that have happened here or with you with the studio process? Oh, I feel like I have so many cool stories. Um, I think that this is kind of my go-to that I always tell just because it was a, a little bit larger than life for me, but several years ago, before we redid the studio, um, the actor Russell Crowe has a band called 30 Odd Foot of Grunts. And this was long enough ago that he had just, he was just opening the movie, the movie Gladiator was just premiering. So he was getting all these huge headlines and um, just becoming a huge star. And he, his people called about recording and I called Freddie and I was like, you know, Russell Crowe wants to come in for two months. And he said, is he with a record label or, you know, who's gonna give us a purchase order or pay the deposit? And I was like, no, he's not with a label. We're probably not going to get a purchase order. We'll get a deposit, but you know, Freddie is Russell Crowe, and he's like he had no idea who he was. But so to fast forward a little bit, uh, Freddie and our daughter and I went to Europe during this time while I was confirming all of this, and it was a very, very hands-on session, helping with lodging for like 30 Australians because they were doing a documentary during this time. So I was doing lodging and you know catering and getting everything set up, and and then a, a live show that he did at Stubbs and. Um, so anyway, a lot of hands-on work, and we go to Europe in the middle of this and get off the plane, and there's this huge life-size billboard of Gladiator, and I was like, that, that's, that's the guy. And he's like, okay, I'm pretty sure we'll get the deposit, we'll be covered. But anyway, again, to fast forward, it's very work intense getting ready, and I didn't have, you know, um, as many people on my, it, it, we're just mom and pop, so it was pretty much me in that office. And I have a friend who I flew with at Southwest Airlines, and she had couple of weeks off she said let me come help you um, just give me any of the little tedious work at the time we had vending machines in the lobby and vending machines are hugely important to the clients we have to have snacks in the refrigerator you know right. we just like to have them to have options because they're stuck in this cave and so the, one of the vending machines was broken one of my friend Evelyn's jobs was get in touch with this vending machine repairman he won't call me back he was supposed to be here weeks ago so she's on him every day and it's the day that Russell Crowe is supposed to show up. He's supposed to get here at two, and uh, the guy has not shown up. So all of a sudden, this guy walks in. He's got on like one of those like uh, um, twill shirts with cut-off sleeves with a patch. Looks like a service station. Um, really cool shirt. Him jeans. He's barefoot, and he walks in. And my friend Evelyn walks up to him and goes, "Thank God you are here." And she had some language in there and said, "Russell Crowe's getting here today." And he puts his hand out and says, nice to meet you, I'm Russell Crowe, and it was him. Okay. So that is my very hands down favorite like moment here. Yes, that's it was really, really cool. It was, and again, so larger than life that we're here for two months and Great. paparazzi and it was very cool. Yeah. But we've had so many amazing bands and stories. I could go on for days. It was a place called the Summer House Restaurant and she played piano here. Mm -hmm. So um, that was back in the 60s, I wanna say when we started tearing all this down and, and look back at pictures of her, it now looks exactly like it did then. So, wow. it's, so it was really cool for us to discover that. We had covered all these beams. We just really had no idea that it was all, you know, again, brick walls. And, but this room is really, really magical when we sort of transform it into a live music space or if there's an event, you know, it'll sort of be the main room for that. We've had seated dinners back here or um, we're doing like a little TV series out of here called Inside Arlen where we bring in all this lounge furniture and the band will set up up here. It's just like really intimate magical shows that sound good and the vibe is just really really cool. What we feel is really still intimate but high energy in this room is 100 to 120. Real seated? Mm -hmm. No not seated. Um, well and not not like folding chair seated. But like we'll have cushions and ottomans and couches, you know, like over South by, 
there were at least 120 in here at night, and then probably another 75 in there. And okay. So, but but like for a seat, we've had a seated dinner for 65, very comfortable. It's just. Uh, it's a little deceiving. You can have a lot more in here than you would think, but you're certainly not. If you're going to have like folding chairs and have a, a, a presentation, which we also did over South by Southwest with the Grammy organization, they had, I want to say they had 60 folding chairs throughout the room and then a couple of cocktail tables. So it depends on if you're, you know, doing a show where you really want a crowd in here or if you want like a seated event. And again, when, like if you have a it's probably different if you have just like a presentation, but if you have music, um, all the sound or whatever's going on is piped in those two rooms as well. So depending on the type of event you're having, some people will be sitting in that first room with the board and listening, and then in this room, and then here. So, you know, again, probably another 75 people in there, and maybe 20 in there, so. And then right here starts Studio B, and uh, for, for some of the events we have, like they'll have, have a green room for the artist, or um, dressing rooms, or some of the catering. So we have some lounge areas back here in addition to Studio B, so I'll just kind of show you all this. And this is a different kind of console, an SSL, that came from Pernalis from when we were running that studio out there. What is a green room? A green room is where the artists all, right, hang out and have their refreshments and beverages and wait for their Chill appearance. before they go on. Yeah, it's their chilling space. Studio B, they can close it off or keep it open. And for events and catering and stuff, and y'all excuse, we're redoing a closet back here so there's a lot of paint and stuff out, but there's another kitchen area and bathroom back here, so you can kind of do it from either end. We just had a little more of a corporate type event last week, um, and they had this really amazing band, David Beck, Blue Healer, that was in oh, Sons of Fathers, yeah. play in here, and they had our engineers record it, and, there, and it was a very small event. There were like 30 people, and they, Lambert's catered it, and uh, Tito's built us that bar, by the way, which tells you how much Tito's that we uh, kind of go through <laughs> in our events. But anyway, so they had the bar set up in here, and they did everything in this room. But their people got to go watch our engineers record the, the session. And it was, these people loved it. It was really, really cool. It's the first time that it's been like, it was almost interactive. Mm -hmm. That's the first one we've done that was that. And, and I guess it would have to be small enough to do that. Mm -hmm. there, there were, in fact, I started feeling sorry for the band. I was like, people really are listening to you. They're just There's up in that room band. watching Jacob yeah. record you. Mm -hmm. So it was really cool. Awesome. Thank you. You're so welcome. You're very welcome. Are you are you involved in the ACO? You know, um, not physically there as much, but yes. Um, when when for years, uh, Bo Armstrong and his wife Val were really good friends of ours, and Bo is the um, the head of Stratus Properties who did this partnership and we talked about this Freddie and Bo talked about it for years and so getting that all planned and initiated yes we were all very you know actively involved in it the day-to-day -day stuff I'm here so much that I'm not over there. I'm, I spend a lot of time there and I love it and I feel like it's you know also such a part of our heart but right. but this is my day-to-day -day, my my real baby okay. yeah thank you so much this is thank you all about kayaking on the Colorado. Oh, and he's he's just bought a new kayak. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. He called and said, you were going to kill me. Uh, I found a kayak that you can put a trolling motor on, you can stand on it. So it's being shipped in the next week or so. Oh, how cool. <laughs>